Welcome to Keto Beyond the Couch, episode 204. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are two, two crazy, crazy ketos. ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome. If you are new here, please say hi down below. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and every Monday we go live on Keto Beyond the Couch because life exists beyond the couch. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is 2crazyketos.com and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time it's Monday you'll be alerted to it. It's Monday morning, Joe. It is Monday morning. 10 a.m., we made it through the weekend. Did you have a fantastic weekend? We'd love to know. Yeah. So uh, if you are new here, Keto Beyond the Couch is all about subscribers. It started off as Keto on the Couch, where we filmed it on the couch. And then recently, we changed the name to Keto Beyond the Couch to talk about how, like, hey, once you get healthy, you need to get off the couch. Do something with being healthy and all that movement you're going to gain and all that incredible new health that you're going to have. Uh, we like to celebrate our subscribers, answer questions and comments that we found on our different social media platforms over the last week, and also highlight some success stories yeah. that we came across. So we need you guys to share those success stories. Don't wait until you've reached goal weight, goal size, to celebrate, that is too long to wait. I recently enjoyed a, a victory where I've been able to move myself down on the scale a little bit. Took two years, Yep. two years to see a one pound loss. I cannot wait two years to celebrate something, Joe. That's right. I, I, I will just hate myself and we're supposed to be loving ourselves. So I do want to say before we get started, I wanted to let you guys know about a Valentine's Day sale that Perfect Keto is having. And what the sale is, is it is buy one, get one free. Or buy two, get two free. Or buy three, get three free. That's a decent sale. There is a link for it down below. Now, here's the thing. The sale is not on everything on the site. Oh, okay. It is on... Strategic things. Strategic things kind of related to Valentine's Day. Well, that, so, for example... Something strawberry? Strawberry collagen. Okay. The NOLA bars. Uh, I think the strawberry MCT oil powder. There's a whole list of things. If you use that link, it'll take you to everything that's on sale for buy one, get one free. I see the white chocolate. I kind of associate white chocolate... With Valentine's with Day. With Valentine's Day. What about you guys? Do you associate white chocolate, milk chocolate, or dark chocolate with Valentine's Day? Is that like one of those two? Now, speaking of white chocolate, we actually got a little box from Willie over at Keto Cracked. Um, it's, we're getting close to Valentine's Day, but he wanted to make sure everybody knew just like what they had as a special mm -hmm. for Valentine gift offerings. Um, and so they have the ultimate gift box, which is going to be wrapped with a pink bow. It's especially for Valentine's Day. Also included in this box is going to be a strawberry peanut butter and jelly caramel crunch flavor. Ooh. It's his first time making it and we've only made a really small batch. Now so, I will put a link for this after we're done. I, yeah. I didn't realize that we had this for today. So there's so much stuff where, in there. Where, whoa, 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 whoa. So peanut, all kinds of things in there. And then I guess one of these Where's guys. Where's the peanut butter and jelly? I think it might be in here. Okay. I don't know if you want to try it. No. Okay, no, those look those like. Those are the, the little. Uh, I think these go with the ultimate box. Those are like the truffles. And then these are... That's the ganache. Oh, that's the ganache. This stuff is so stinking good. We've done a lot of reviews about it. I don't know which one the peanut butter and jelly is. We're, Maybe it's not in here. We are not making money off of showing it to you. Yep. We are... I like the new package. We just though. like it. And we want you to know that they're... Small business. Really clean ingredients. I like this new packaging. There absolutely are keto options even for valentine's day if you are wanting to give a gift of something sweet to somebody you know this is an option yeah you know teachers and loved ones people who live across the country they'll ship it out so yeah. thanks willie from keto crack so we will yeah i'll put a link after we are done down below again we're not affiliated with them 
Uh, just we've done a lot of reviews from before, and it's yeah. uh, really good products. Uh, okay, so real quick, if you are new here, uh, we're gonna go through our regular keto be on the couch, and then we address the chat like the last ten or fifteen minutes. So if you have a question for us, hold off till then. Uh, now, if there's something you want to talk about while we're going through everything, you can use that super chat function down below, and that will highlight our screen, and it also helps out the channel a little bit. Are you ready? I'm totally ready. Okay, we're going to start off with our Keto College Adjunct Professor of the Week. This was an inspirational post that I found. I think this one was on uh, Mighty Networks, Hey, actually. Sarah Gustafson. And it's from Sarah, and it's just this uh, little thing. It says, strong people don't put others down. They lift them up. Wow. That'll preach. Absolutely. If I have to feel good about myself by stepping on someone else, then then it is for naught. Like, yeah. that, is, that is not good. I also think I have to always keep in check. I got to check something while you're talking. I have to keep in check my tendency to celebrate, oh, everything just I know, went you're off. Fine. Oh, okay, I tend to celebrate wrongly my when I am being super hardcore in some area of keto. Okay, so let's say that I'm doing triple B and E, or I am participating in a more carnivore approach for whatever reason that I am doing it. Okay, so. I have to make sure that I am not getting snarky with other people who aren't doing that. What if they're right. just doing simple keto? What if they're just getting started? What if they are like low carb right now? I don't want to have to step on them like, oh, what you're doing is super less than. Like, look how much better I am at, at being keto because I'm doing it like much more hardcore. So, you know, even during this season, um, I was just, I'm just thinking of that in terms of even showing keto chocolates or, or keto products that like are on sale right now. It's not to derail somebody who's trying to do some sort of elimination challenge, but at the same time, we have to acknowledge that everybody isn't in the same place right now. Right. And, and it's probably good for us to just make sure, am I proud of my keto journey, but not at the expense of someone else's keto journey. Yeah. That's something I always have to keep in check because sometimes it's like, even if I'm like, I've been keto for five years, that's not something, that's something to be proud about in a healthy way, but not like something for me to use as a club to slap other people, Yeah, right? And then it kind of ties in with today's topic, which is, is carnivore the best diet? And we're gonna get into it with a couple of the comments today, but it really comes down to, What's good for you? And and if somebody if you are a carnivore, awesome. If you are only eating meat and that is sustainable for Way you, to go. awesome. And that is awesome until you start beating up other people. Yeah. And telling them that they're doing it wrong because they're not carnivore. Then we have issues. Well, I mean, it's your right to do whatever you want, but like take it someplace else. That's right. How about that? So and again, I, I'm all for carnivore if it's sustainable for you. It's not sustainable for me. Do I yeah. think carnivore is an amazing, healthy way to eat? Yes. Can I do it long term? No. That doesn't make me wrong. It doesn't make me bad. It doesn't make me unhealthy. We are omnivores or omnicarnivore. We eat meat, but our body is designed to eat vegetables and stuff, especially when you can't get meat. That's how we've always been. Now, speaking of vegetables, yesterday you sent me, I don't know if you put the picture up here, but it just like as a funny aside, up. was uh, there is now an all like veggie line of dog treats right now that's out there. We're getting into an issue that will cause problems, but I'm gonna say it now. Now that you brought it up, I wasn't gonna say it. Tabitha? Yes. So there is, you, you can actually buy vegan dog treats. She don't want it those. It is <laughs> plant-based, which that makes no sense. Because I'm sorry, if you're eating cow, you're eating plant-based food. Right. You are. Yeah. Because your cow eats plants and it's plant-based. So, <laughs> uh, but it is literally plant-based beef jerky or plant-based jerky for your animals. Because a lot of times vegans, you know, they don't want to own animals. And right, which I totally understand. I can, it, but it's like, if you're not, and, and I was reading this article about this. There was actually an, um, somebody who was arrested for this, where it was somebody who had that kind of eating. And then they refused to give their dog 
any meat. Wow. Because they felt that like they would, so they would only feed their dog vegetables and that's animal abuse because that's not a what dog they eat. and a cat, especially cats are complete carnivores. Um, they don't eat vegetables. They're not supposed to be eating vegetables. And this person was refusing to feed it any type of meat product because that would not be like in line with their thinking and their philosophies. And they ended up getting in trouble for animal abuse. Oh, man. Well, so, all I know is if Charity, on, if Charity and Roscoe eat a piece of grass, it's to barf, usually. Uh, Marie, thank you for the four ninety nine super chat. Said my friend is a vegetarian and doesn't see eye to eye with me with my ketovore way of eating, but we honor each yes. other. Yes, and hey, that is it. That one is of my where dive it is. buddies, like yes. Melissa. She she's a dive buddy. She's one of the instructors at the store that we go to, and um, she's a vegan. She actually used to be keto, and she said she had some health issues eating keto, and she's a vegan. And we can agree to disagree, but guess what? I'm still going to go diving with her. I'm still going to trust my life to her. Yeah. She's going to trust her life to me. I think she's actually planning on a girl's trip uh -huh. for in, in, May, in April or May with you. Who wants to she do wants a take girl's a bunch trip? Of, she wants to take a bunch of girls down for like National Ladies Day or something. It's like a, it's a, a, a day for women who dive. I like that. And that would be cool. And so, I'm a woman who dives now. So even though she's a vegan, we can get along. Well, and, and we can agree to disagree on certain points. I even thought it was really sweet that like you guys were going on a dive recently and you had your spear ready, like ho always hoping that we'll catch a lobster or a lionfish. And the people on the boat that also the know The dive her master and the captain. Was like, wait a minute, are you going down here for like a hunting trip? Like why, why are you letting him do this? And she's like, because we're together. Right. And like, I'm honoring, like, it's his dive also. Right. And I thought that that was so good that it wasn't like, you're not going to like make her eat lobster. And, right. but she's also not going to put up a wall for you to fulfill your plans. And that is friendship. That is love. Right. I love it. And Marie. she is for killing the lionfish. Yeah. Uh, Marie, thanks for the not $1.99 super chat. Said my dogs only, only eat, eat meat. meat. Well, it was funny. I was picking apart a chicken. And a uh, rotisserie chicken. And boy, uh, Tabitha was hoping that I would have the shaky hands because it was like just looking at me like. Real quick before we move on, Stacy said, Rachel, hey, I Stacey. got an espresso virtual this weekend. Ooh. Do you have a favorite pod? Uh, if you want a good one, I, I like a lot of the limited edition ones, so they're hard to get, like the, the, What's the that? mint one and the cram. Uh, What's the, that pink one I like that's got the. That's the one that's energy. infused with vitamin B. B? Uh, I don't remember the name of it, but honestly, a great place. The chocolate is really good. Yeah. Um, the um, what is the one that you like? The the caramel one. Yeah, it was like a caramel cookie one. Yeah. What I do find that I like the most now, Anthony's girlfriend Sarah is like espresso all day long. Like she will just have like a tiny cup. I like the americano ones. They're like the five ounce ones. But I like the ones that are like the seven. Those are the ones, cup ones. The real cup ones. Because I don't need an espresso as much as I need just a good, strong, large cup of coffee. Right. So that's what I kind of lean on. Okay. Uh, subscriber of the Week. First one is Cynthia. Hey, Cynthia. Said, I've been putting off, this is what you were talking about earlier. I've been putting off sharing my story. I did shorten this a little bit because okay. she was talking about uh, her partner. Uh, I've been putting off sharing my story because I'm not even halfway to my goal weight yet. I was thinking I should wait at least one year anniversary that the picture would be more dramatic and I would hopefully be at least halfway to my goal. Today, my husband and I took pictures of each other to log our six month progress. Looking at those pictures from six months ago are awful. Mm. It's humbling to share these photos that I thought I would only ever stay on my phone. But week after week, I hear Joe and Rachel encourage us to share our story because it helps others. So here it is. If this can help someone, then it, I will swallow some humble pie. Oh, bless you. Starting your heart. size was an extremely tight 22W. The only reason I, w I wasn't in 24Ws was because I didn't know where to put, the <laughs> to put them. Uh, I was truly at my largest size. Today, I'm a size 16. Way to Wait, go. On August 1st, 2022, 279.6 pounds. Today... 222.6. Let's see you, Cynthia. Cynthia! Oh my gracious woman! Yes! Stuff is happening, young lady. What a difference. Thank you. You are absolutely right. Somebody needs to see that today because they're only thinking, is there like in six months, where could I be? 
In six months, you could look like Cynthia, completely different. You absolutely look incredible. Thank you so not much for not waiting. Don't wait. Today, share something. Go into our Facebook group. Go into Mighty Networks. I want to see your win. Part of loving ourselves is acknowledging success. Yeah. A lot of times we think, well, I'm going to get to the point. I'm going to make the jump from I hate myself to I love myself. There is, that's too far of a jump. That's not going to happen like that. It's going to be little steps to get you from here to there. And one step is acknowledging something good about you. We need to stop focusing our attention in what is bad about us. We think that that's going to be the motivator for us to get better is to really clubbing ourselves and focusing on the negative. No, we need to celebrate something that is good about us. So I challenge every single one of you watching to put someplace, either on Facebook or in Mighty Networks, something good that you've noticed about you right now. Uh, next one we have is from Brenda. Hey, Brenda. I started at my highest weight January of 2020. Then I lost 20 pounds on doctor-recommended standard American diet. Then started cutting carbs, not knowing what a carb truly was. I thought honey was good. Then I went keto. I found Dr. Barry July of 2021. I'm off my statins. Leviathan metformin was almost put on insulin and I recently had to stop vitamin D. My keto carnivore lifestyle has given me all of my nutrition. Bonus, my hair is growing back from side effects from the hypothyroidism. Wow, down, down 89, 89 pounds. pounds. Oh, Brenda, wow. You look amazing. Way to go, young lady. Are you turning off our I'm air turning conditioning? turning off the air conditioning. <laughs> so. <laughs> but that is good. That is such an incredible victory. And thank you for sharing it. We need to see this. We need to see other people's journey so that we can have hope for our journey. If yeah. we are only looking at our journey from the perspective of like, is this the only amount of success that I could ever possibly have? I'm not saying looking at other people's journey in such a comparison way that we feel bad. I'm talking about looking at other people's journey in a possibility right. of what can be done. We need to get the word out. I, I on Saturday had lacrosse training, uh, which was more of me helping other people. Um, but there was a brand new guy there, brand new. He's never officiated before. And he weighs a lot. Like I would probably say 325 pounds and we were just talking and and I actually officiated his children when they were in high school so we were just talking and he remembers when I was heavy and when we were talking he was like how did you lose the weight because I was telling him that like on average during the high school season I'm gonna work probably 10 to 12 high school games a week on a high school lacrosse game, you are going to walk slash run two to five miles. Wow. So during lacrosse season in the past, I've had to up the amount I eat to six, seven, eight thousand calories just to maintain weight and to have energy for the games. And he was like, I don't know if I can do two games a week without collapsing. How do you do this? Mm. So I told him. And after, it, it reminded me of six years ago when I started, yeah. why we started our YouTube channel. 30 minutes in, telling him this, and he was like, that doesn't work. And you're standing there in front of him as evidence right. that it does work. Right. But it's what you're... What he needs to see other people, too. He needs to see other people. Yeah. yeah. He, he needs. To he see was like, "I'm too people. old for this. There's no way I could do this. I'm too set in my mind. I mean, every possible excuse of why he shouldn't do it." Yeah. Let's take a quick fade to black and come back with comments. Welcome back. I saw this uh, co this uh, co comment in the chat. Hey, Serena. From Serena it says, "Good morning. This is my first day at 55 years old. Birthday was yesterday, February 5th." Ooh. I'm one year, no evidence of disease and cancer-free and reverse pre-diabetes number yeah. 5.7 A1C. Yeah. 
82% uh, uh, 82 blood glucose as of Friday thanks to keto and 2 KK. Wow, Serena. Well, let's celebrate with happy birthday song. You ready? Yep. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Serena. Happy birthday to you and many more. So many more. What a beautiful 55. I love that number. What a what a good year to be. Okay, ready? Let's get yeah. into some of these uh, comments from, from last week. First one's from Polly. Hey, Polly. Not new here, but I wanted to say good morning from Frigid Snowy, Colorado. Good I'm morning. officially down 55 pounds, doing a great part to YouTube ketogenics and intermittent fasting. Wow. Well, thank you. There's that 55 again in another beautiful, beautiful place, right? 55 pounds down. Thank you guys so much. We want you to know that you allowing us to be a part of your keto journey, that is so special to us. We don't take that lightly. We totally understand that you could be anywhere on a Monday and you could be watching anything and you are deciding to invest your time in watching us. And that, that just really blesses our life so much. So thank you for that. Uh, next one is from Sharon. Hey, Sharon. Finding which ingredients are inflammatory on our own is better than five trips to the doctor and the doctor telling you to try this drug or that drug. Boy, that's right. That seems lately what I hear doctors say to people to try this drug. Really try a drug not even knowing what the cause is is very sad. I have heard this many times. I always ask the person, have they even told you what you have? Yeah. Wow. And, and this, it makes so much more sense to do it this way, right? I know is that something like beef, butter, bacon, and egg is difficult. It's difficult. It when is. When you eliminate a lot of in foods that you eat, even meat that you enjoy, like chicken or heavy cream or cheese, it is difficult. But the other way we can go is have our doctors literally take a dart and throw it yeah. against the wall and go, that's the drug Seriously. I'm going to get. I mean, they have a book on their desk called the PDR, right? The physician's desk reference. The whole purpose of that book is what symptom, here's the drug. That, But a lot of times they've got to guess. I mean- They're practicing medicine. Dr. Saiva says that. We're, we're not like majoring medicine. We're practicing yeah, medicine. They, they don't know everything. It's, I'm not saying doctors are bad, but a lot of it is a guessing game for them. I mean, yeah. you went through it even with, you know, your mental illness and stuff. They're guessing which drug is going to work. They I mean, try them all. I'm, I've been messing with my, my um, 3D printer because I want to sell it because I want to get a better one. And so I finally got things dialed in and I was messaging with Luke, one of our subscribers, L3D, because he is an expert when it comes to 3D printers. And I'm like... I send him a picture of what happened. And I was like, what is causing this? Do you think I have the temperature up too high? And he sends me back a laundry list of, it could be this, 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 this. I'm like, okay, which one? Now we gotta go through one at a time. Let's try this, do another print, let's try this. That's a lot of times what happens when we're experimenting with drugs. So well, it is so much easier, as difficult as it sounds to, eliminate a whole bunch of things. That's why the lion diet is helpful to figure out exactly what's going wrong. Spend a month only eating beef and salt. And and then from there, you can slowly add things back in and go, like, oh yeah, cheese causes me to bloat five pounds. Well, and that is a very simple machine. Right. And we are not as simple of a machine. There's a lot going on inside of this machine. And I think that that is such a great point. Is it going to take a big investment of your time and energy and even your feelings to check out individual ingredients and test them on yourselves and what they do? Yes, mm -hmm. it is. But is it easier to just like take in medicine and experience the side effects that it may cause, the problems that it may add and still have confusion? And oh, guess what? The nutrition that you put in your body will still interact with that drug and will still make a difference. So like you are never going to get away from having to have some sort of investment of time 
really trying to track down what personally works for you and your body. It's like why I personally would never take a statin. For me, I, I'm not telling you what to do, but if you look at the laundry list of side effects of statins, it is not worth it to me for the 1% possibility of a decrease in risk for cardiovascular disease, 1% and only in men. Like that's not worth it. I'd rather look at my eating and figure out where can I, you know, work on things with my food. <laughs> Let's move on to the next one. It's from Dedeur. I got to say first, Chris said that you know, a simple machine. I don't know about that. My friends keep telling me I'm a tool. <laughs> I love it. Uh, they said, uh, I've been doing carnivore since August. My weight was 85 pounds, but I've gained weight to 120 pounds. Now I'm doing a one-to-one -one fat to protein, but as I try to increase fat, I am gaining weight. Any suggestions? Okay, so after I put this in there, I started thinking this might be somebody who might be messing with us, but I'm really hoping not. Yeah. Uh, only because like, if you're weighing 85 pounds, unless you are very tiny, like four and a half feet, it's yeah. probably because you're way underweight. Right. Okay. Um, but, you know, I, again, without knowing how much, how tall you are, it, it's going to be kind of difficult. But what could be causing you to gain weight is two things. A, you were under eating before. Right. Okay, if, you, if you're if you under eating, if you've been eating 12 or 1300 calories, which is not healthy, okay, it's not healthy to be eating anything under your basal metabolic rate. Okay, so that's first of all. So if you're under eating and then you begin to eat healthy fats and meats, you're probably gonna gain some weight because your body's gonna heal. Yeah. I mean, Rachel did not lose any weight for months when she started kidding. Now she didn't gain. Right, I didn't gain, but I didn't lose either. And I know that that was frustrating. It was very, very frustrating. But I had mopped myself into a very small corner by only taking in 500 calories a day for two solid years. So getting very strict with yourself is not the only answer. Yeah. Okay. So if I am very, very strict with myself, but what I'm doing strictly is wrong, I have to heal yeah. from that before we can move forward in new success. Right. So you may be in a season of healing and not ready for new success. Well, even Serena said right there, uh, the proper human diet is a weight optimization diet. Yeah. I cannot think off of the top of my head, now we are not doctors, nurses, or health professionals. I am a certified master coach for uh, the carnivore or the, the primal way of eating. But I can't think of any way 85 pounds is healthy. I just can't. I think four foot 11, a healthy weight, a four foot 11 female, a healthy weight would be between 100 and 120 pounds. So, and that's a four foot 11 female. Mm -hmm. I don't know, like 85 pounds, I just don't think it's healthy for anybody unless you're like three and a half feet tall maybe. Um, 120 pounds is probably your optimal weight. Sometimes we get so frustrated, we have a number in our head. We just pulled it that's out of the, the sky. That's the number that society says I'm supposed to weigh. That's the number that I have in my head that I need to be. Only it's not a good number for I, you. I can tell you, even at when I was in high school, when I was in high school, I plucked a number out of the sky and that number was 115 pounds. That was the what number. What do you weigh now? You're I, a size two, right? I, or a size... I, I weigh right around 145 pounds. So like that me getting, and I feel very comfortable. I feel good inside of my body. Um, I feel great. 115 pounds would not be reasonable for me. It's just that I pulled that number out of the air and that's what I thought I should be. So we need to like eliminate that number because that number it is not in context of like our, you know, our body, our shape, how we're going to feel. I believe that if I somehow strong armed myself down to 115 pounds, I I wouldn't feel good. I would feel terrible, yeah. honestly. So, excuse yeah. me. I yeah. think that we just we need to 
uh, really start to realize for ourselves that maybe there is a number or a weight that I am supposed to be that's not part of the charts. Right. That is, you know, again, a lot of these recommended weights, they're from the 70s. They've never been updated. Yeah. We're, our bodies and the way we live is very different. I'm not talking about the standard American diet, but we're we're more active. We A lot of times we're, we're very muscular now, you know, because of things that are in our food. It's nothing has been updated, but we have to go, this is where I feel good and not focus on that number. I mean, again, Rachel weighs 145 pounds. She's a size two. But I just pulled that number out of the air. We, we, I don't know if we see, and I, it always gets me mad when you get to like a Wikipedia page and you see a celebrity and they weirdly will like put their weight on. Like put the weight to right. it. Like that is that has nothing to do with our accomplishments. Yeah. You know, if I'm looking up a celebrity because I'm like, oh, okay, well, where did they, you know, where did they study? What are some of the films that they've been in? Where they weigh? Right. Like that is not like the success of who we are. Right. That is not my talent. That is not that. That is just like the Earth's gravitational pull on my body. Right. Right. I mean, and again, for for guys out there, and, and we're gonna move on. But for guys out there, how many of you would like to look like The Rock, or how many of you would like to look like, um, I don't know, Arnold Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime? There you go. Right. That means you have to be willing to weigh 300 pounds. Right, I mean. Are you willing to have that number 300 pounds, but it means you look like that? So a number isn't everything. And if that person that wrote that is was not trying to mess with us, um, I apologize. But again, we do get that kind of stuff. But yeah. it just seems it's a very low number. But and please us, don't work on that number. Yeah, message us again if there's more things that we need to understand, like yeah. more clarification. Next one is from Eileen. Hi, Eileen. I'm so confused about all the conflicting information on YouTube. Should I eat the carnivore way and add veggies? I'm 75 and have tried so many different diets over the years. Eileen, we totally understand where you're at because that's been our experience okay. as well. So, should you eat carnivore? Carnivore is very healthy. If you can sustain it. Yeah. Okay? If you can sustain it and you are okay to never eat veggies, then do it. Yeah. It is a great way to eat. Understand, if you are eating carnivore and then bring some veggies back, you may experience some temporary bloating. That doesn't mean your body doesn't like vegetables. And anybody who tells you that, they're misinformed. Right. Okay? It is that you've altered your gut biome because you haven't been giving it that, and now you've got to rebuild them. If you begin to eat the vegetables again, you'll have that gut biome. For me, for Rachel, carnivore is not sustainable long term. We like to have a salad. We do. We like to have jalapeno poppers. Last night... <gasps> We had asparagus. And I'm not ashamed. Right? I'm not ashamed of it. So it is okay if you want some vegetables. Now, when should you not have vegetables? If you start to test yourself and find you're having other health issues, like you're having skin reactions. There you go. Or you're having breathing problems. Things like that's where we have to start looking at like, oh my gosh, I'm having an allergic reaction to eating this vegetable. Not a little bit of bloating, an allergic reaction. There's a difference. But whatever form of keto, carnivore, the proper human diet you want to do, so long as it's sustainable, that's the one you should be doing. If you people, oh, go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. I was just gonna say, if, if people, if you feel like I hate my life, that's not the keto for you. That's right. You know what I mean? Like it's a very that's an easy test. If it's just like I am doing this and I feel like I am so punished by this, then that's not the keto for you. Go down, uh, you know, one notch, right? Or or go up one notch because I mean, it was it was funny. Like it reminds me of when I was scuba diving, and you may get there eventually. You may go deeper down into keto than what you are. Like we notice all the time that like there's ingredients that we just kind of don't utilize anymore. Right. Now there's not like there's anything wrong with them, but I think of like almond flour. We used to make everything with almond flour, and now we don't use it quite as much, right? So you will naturally go down deeper, but if you force yourself, it's gonna be like me trying to equalize and go deeper too fast. Right. What happened? I hurt my ear, and then I was starting to associate 
scuba diving or learning this new thing with something painful. Ow, I don't right. want to do this. Maybe I need to quit altogether. I don't want you to quit. So do the form of keto that's going to keep you in the water. That's in why keto. we tell people when you first get started, you're not looking at any macros. You're just going to eat, right? Don't eat carbohydrates. That's why we do product reviews. That's why we're willing to tell you about, you know, the keto crack yeah. from Willie. And we get messages. I wish you would stop product reviews. Stop endorsing or telling people it's okay to have a piece of keto chocolate. No. No. And why? <laughs> why will I not stop doing that? Because there is somebody that they will not try any form of keto unless they can have a piece of keto chocolate. Is it optimal? No. But it's better than the standard American diet. And so if we can show you what you can have and what you shouldn't have, then we're going to do that knowing that, you know what, when we got started, we had mug cakes and fat bombs every single day. Now it's maybe once a month. Yeah. Many times we will do a product review, take a bite of it, and then it gets passed off to Rachel's mom or to our nephews or to the boys because we're like, okay, I've had enough. And if I have a lot of it in the house, I may eat it. And it was good or not good. And if it's not good, it goes in the trash. Um, and we move on. But some people need that because they're at the beginning of their journey and they're going to slowly probably weed that stuff out and make it more and more and more of a treat. But it's our job to show you which products could hurt you and which products might help you at the beginning. Right. Well, and what is like authentically going to be friendly to your diet? And is there, a, if there is a product that we feel like is being, you know, is misrepresenting themselves right. and is not going to be helpful, we like to point that out. But we are never going to give directions that's going to lead somebody back to the standard American diet. So sometimes if the directions are, if you won't do it my way, you might as well quit. No way. We are never going to take that route because I would rather somebody have just no sugar in their life and reduce their carbohydrates than to be like, it's lion diet or nothing. Right. Okay, let's take a quick fade to black and come back with more comments. Happy Monday. What's the temperature where you're at? I saw when we first got started, some people are having a little bit warmer temperatures. It's always nice when somebody's like, it's 50 degrees, let's have a party, right? Because mm -hmm. it's been so stinking cold and you finally have a reprieve. I did want to put this up from Matreya. Hey, Matreya. Uh, Matreya, Jackie, they're organizing a meetup in Ohio. Nice. Uh, she said, for a sign up for the chat, I'm closer to the capacity on the Keto Ohio meetup on February 25th in Westerville. If you have an RSVP to me, you need to do so ASAP. So reach out to Matreya, Radical Geek, and go ahead and do that. So thankful for these meetups. Juju said, Joe, you look amazing today in a positive way. Your face looks thinner awesome. to describe about what you've been looking today. Thank you. Wow. That's nice. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. That's like really sweet. Next yeah. one's from Edgar. Hi, Edgar. So non-scale victory here yesterday. I've shopped at the same store for the last 10 to 11 years. Uh, DXL, for those of you who know it, uh, it's a men's big and tall store, and I needed new shorts for the gym. My current one's... Keep trying to leave the chat every time we go. <laughs> That's cute. And the strings are starting to hurt to try and uh, and get, get them, them tight enough. Yeah, I know that feeling. So I went to the website, started browsing for the next size down, but there is no next size Ooh. down. They no longer have stuff that in my size. I have to shop in normal clothes for the first time in over yes. a decade. I'm still in the shirts, but they don't carry large gym shorts. Praise the Lord. That is awesome. Edgar, we are super celebrating. I can tell you there, there is a better indicator of success. If you're looking for a goal, that was, I'm going to tell you, that was a more powerful moment to me when I was able to shop, when I was able to move from the W size section, because I was literally busting out of a 24W when I started, and moving over where my size distinction didn't need a W at all, and I could fit into the normal size, like every woman clothing, and I also didn't have to shop because I always got all, like Torrid wasn't a thing yet, but I shopped in Lane Bryant and I shopped in Avenue because I could find my sizes there. And when I didn't need to utilize those stores anymore, 
It was such a victory to me. So thank you so much for sharing that. Somebody needs to make that their goal. Stop trying to focus on a poundage down and start trying to focus on a success like soon and very soon, I'm going to be able to shop in a section of a store that is going to help me remember like, wow, I've come a very far, far way. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Barry. Hey, Barry. I had some keto test strips, urine strips, that I had purchased at least two years ago. They are no longer working and the bottle said to use them within three months of opening. Obviously, I need to get new ones and was wondering if anyone has suggestions on what brand to purchase. Okay, so I did answer this on Facebook, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it here because I know there's a lot of new people. Urine test strips... For, first of all, you don't need to test your ketones. Right. Okay. You That's don't need good to, news. If you're not eating carbohydrates. Guess what? You don't need to test your ketones. You don't. Uh, we rarely test unless we're doing some kind of an experiment. Um, you don't, you just don't need to. When is a good time to test? In the first couple of weeks. Why should you test in the first couple of weeks? Because it gives you a shot in the arm. Yeah, it, it, does. it goes, you did it. I see Keep it Keep going. I can see it happening. After that though. But urine strips. In the first two weeks, they're really good because you're going to get yourself into ketogenesis, which is where your body is creating ketones. Notice I didn't say ketosis. I said ketogenesis. Your body is creating ketones. Your body is most likely in the first week or two weeks when you first start producing ketones, not utilizing those ketones for fuel. That's ketosis. Ketosis is when your body uses the ketones for fuel. What happens instead? Your body spills them into the urine. So your body is dumping them into the urine and now they show up on a test strap. Once you get fat adapted and your body begins to utilize those ketones, those urine strips are going to show almost nothing except for maybe first thing in the morning if you're dehydrated. And I can tell you even from personal experience, I remember we got started Deep purple, like five days in. I'm yes, awesome. About two, three weeks later, I go to check. I'm doing everything right. I haven't changed anything. And now they're not changing color at all. It's because now my body's using the ketones. Yeah. So use the urine strips in the first couple of weeks. And after that, don't bother with them because they're going to show you like probably nothing. If they are showing purple and you're well into keto, it means you're probably dehydrated. Right. So that's another whole issue. But all that's going to happen is if you continue to use those urine strips month and months and months in, you're going to get discouraged because you yeah. think you're not doing it right. But you're putting, you know, it's your gas car and you're continuing to put regular gas in, which is like your, your keto energy, and you're doing it over and over again and you're running just right. If you were to test and the strip says no, it, you're not a diesel. Like you've, it's, it, it's, it's still a gas engine, whether right. you see it test or not, you know, this is what I'm running on. I'm only eating keto. I'm fueling up. Mostly I find that, um, where you're worried is if you are trying to dip in and out, if you're trying to dip in and out and see, did I get away with that? That may be something. So don't don't use it for that. Just stay in. Just stop trying to dip in and out. Maybe and somebody's in It's the same thing with today. a blood meter. I mean, listen, we have a discount code if you want a blood meter. There's yeah. discount codes down below. Keto Mojo is amazing. But it takes a while to affect that. If you eat food and then 40 minutes later, those keto numbers go down, it, 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 there's really no correlation there. We've talked about alcohol before. You can drink alcohol mm -hmm. and not have those numbers get affected. In fact, they may even go up, but you're not using them. That's why they're not going down because you're not using them because you're using alcohol. Just don't eat carbohydrates and you never have to bother testing. Yeah. You just don't have to bother. It doesn't matter. Bronson will tell you, like, he's a carnivore. He doesn't test, but when the couple times he has tested, it's very low. Have you looked at Have you looked at Bronson? I mean, I don't think we need to worry about it. Yeah, I think there's we're doing well. Next one's from Caitlin. Hey, Caitlin, what is your favorite multivitamin? I need a new and better one. Is there a clean gummy vitamin? Asking for the girl who only ever remembers to take gummies. I got a great one for you. You don't need any. Isn't that good? I you mean, eat meat. You get to save specifically money. Specifically, ruminant animals. 
you don't need to take multivitamins. And honestly, unless you're willing to spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars, most of the vitamins that are on the market they're worthless. You're, it's expensive urine. Like they're using things that your body can't even absorb. I mean, there is, and I'm not going to call them out, but there is a very popular keto meal replacement, not keto chow, on the market. And it is an okay product until you look at their source of magnesium. And they're touting how much magnesium is in there except for none of it is bioavailable. So you can say, hey, when you have this, you're consuming a thousand milligrams of magnesium. Your body's not gonna use any of it, but it's there, you know? And that's the case with a lot of these vitamins. They literally can give you stuff and it's a rock. You're not lying, but your body's not using it. Well, and you're just taking it because you're like, it's, it's totally just like, this is something that I'm doing for myself. That's what's making us feel good. It's like I'm being proactive with my health and it's as easy as taking this gummy and eating it. But is it actually helping? So we know that when we're putting, if you want to help yourself today, go ahead and eat your meat. Use that. Prioritize your protein. Prioritize the meat that you're eating. Eat that first. Right. That is a great multivitamin. Now, if you really miss gummies, and maybe Becky can put the video um, as a link, but we have some electrolyte gummies that you could make for yourself, little gummy bears. Now, that's a fun thing, and you get to chew on gummies, and it's actually doing something for right. you. Lady Fritz, the only vitamin you might need is vitamin D2 with K2, depending on where you live. Yeah, and the number one place to get vitamin D is the sun. Now, during the winter, a lot it's of us, tougher. we don't get as much sun. The cool thing is, is you can get a tremendous amount of vitamin D just being outside for about 20 to 30 minutes, but your body can also store that vitamin D better than any other type of vitamin D. So you can, it's during the summer, and when you can, whenever you get a chance to get out in the sun, you should be out in the sun with as much skin exposed as possible without suntan lotion, uh, that's another whole discussion, and let your body absorb all that vitamin D because it can store a lot. Yeah. After that, that's where we talk about your eggs. Make sure you're getting pasture-raised eggs, not any of the other kind of eggs. Pasture-raised eggs where the chickens are out in the sun because they're absorbing the sun and then that vitamin D gets translated into their eggs, and that's all bioavailable to you. So that is the next best place to get a lot of your vitamin D is from your eggs. But you can get all your vitamins from your food. You don't need a whole bunch of extra vitamins that you're buying in a pill now, form. Now, something that I do suggest doing is look up what Google for yourself what cuts of meat and what sources, you're gonna find a lot of it's ruminant animals, have a high concentration of vitamins that you may be deficient in. So like if you're, for my age and my season of life and my sex, we need to pump up the B vitamins, right? That's, that's very good for me. Look up the cuts of meat that pump up those B vitamins. Yeah. And then you can eat toward those vitamins. It really does help. And I mean, I'm going to tell you, you're going to find some really amazing vitamins found in different cuts of ruminant animals. And just as an example, if you combine uh, beef, beef liver, and salmon roe, those three things will give you more vitamins and nutrients than any vegetable on the planet. It's amazing. I mean, and I mean a lot more, and it's all bioavailable. The only thing that you won't get from there is vitamin C, but you actually can get, there's ways around that as well within the meats that you eat, but that's it. Uh, next one we have is from Chris. Hey Chris, I know everyone's body is different, but does anyone else seem like one element packet during a day isn't enough? I like one in the morning hours and one in the afternoon evening hours. No, that's nothing wrong that's with that at all. completely fine. Sometimes I'll have six or seven, sometimes I have two. Uh, your body will crave the, the electrolytes that it needs. And here's the cool thing, when you're using Element or Redmond Relight, and we have links for both of them down below, um, the best way to, because Element doesn't give a discount, uh, the best way to buy Element is to get the four pack. It comes with four packs of them. I think it ends up being like buy three, get one free when you buy the four pack. 
Um, and then when you use our link, you get a free sample pack like this. Right. Of like eight more. Um, now, Redman Relight, we have a discount code, 2 Crazy Ketos, that gets you 15% off. But the cool thing about them is because you're mixing with water, you're not going to overdo your electrolytes. Because if you take in too many electrolytes, your body's just going to flush gonna them out. You're going to pee it out. So you don't have to worry about it. When you're doing pill form, that's where you have to make sure you're getting in enough fluids. Because sometimes I'm really bad when I take any type of pill that I don't chase it with enough water. I don't right? use liquid when I take a pill. It's so. like, it's very, I'm very bad about that. Like, you know, they'll say, it says, plainly like take it with you know a, a big cup of water and I'm like oh nope I just took it with enough water to swallow it right. so I do better a lot of times with the with the little packets because like I'll from drink Jerry. the whole thing I'm an indirect vegetarian I eat cow's meat cow's meat eat, eat veggies therefore, therefore I eat veggies you're see we're doing it. We're getting all of the nutrients that we need from those vegetables through our meats. Next one's from Jessica. Has anyone hey Jessica. made Joe's Keto Chow Core Pudding Mousse yet? I know he hasn't done a video on it, um, but I'm really wanting to try it. If you've made it, how do you we make it? We just taped that video. So that video should be coming out tomorrow. Um, but again, if you are curious, we use Keto Chow Core, a can of coconut milk, a dozen eggs, and two tablespoons of cocoa powder. For a lot of people, it's not sweet enough. Just add some more liquid stevia or some liquid sucralose. You can also use powdered erythritol, um, like Swerve. Um, I haven't tried it with allulose. The only reason we don't use any of those powder things is it adds carbs. Liquid stevia, liquid monk fruit, and liquid sucralose add zero carbs. Yeah. And I know some people may say, well, I don't count those carbs. We count total carbs. I want to be able to have as much as I want. And so when I look at those like carbs from sugar alcohols, too much of anything is not a good thing yeah. except for meat. Um, so I'd rather know, hey, I can have this much and I'm not going to affect my digestive system with having like way too much erythritol. And I know that stevia and sucralose don't affect me. But you know what? When you have too much of those different sugar alcohols, it can affect your weight. And I would suggest challenging yourself a, a little bit by saying, like, especially, you know, I, I've said to myself, I don't like the fact that my sweet tooth threshold is up here. Right. And, like, it takes a sugar bomb type of taste from these, like, sugar alcohols in order for me to enjoy something. That may be the thing that I need to work on a little bit bringing down the, the sweetness like to a to a level that I know is responsible right. right and just and keeping it there and sometimes we just keep trying to push it like past what is you know already there for us I'm I can tell you honestly now like that you're making this keto core pudding the amount of sweetness that's in there I'm starting instead of it being like we need to up it I'm like I'm coming down to where I actually taste sweetness within this recipe which yeah. I actually like but that recipe will be coming out tomorrow so make sure you subscribe to the channel and you have the bell button on so that you're notified when it comes out ding ding uh, next one's from June hey June can someone tell me which electrolyte pills that Joe takes I've seen it on one of the videos but I can't remember so we use while we throw them across the room uh, the, I use these tablets from uh, Keto, Chow. Keto Chow, and also Redmond has them as well. Now, um, <laughs> this package has been open a little while. The only thing with these, you can see they're starting to powder up. It's because of because our moisture level. of our humidity. I, what is it? Uh, hydroscopic, I think. I don't know if Chris is still in here. Um, but this is not they absorb happening. water. This is not if happening in If you live in Utah. Utah, you don't have this problem. No. So, what you want to do is make sure you keep them sealed tightly. If I were to leave one of these on the counter, by the dust. next day it becomes dust. But I like these and I like the Redmond Relight capsules. Oh, also, Keto Chow has great magnesium capsules. That, oh that my we gosh. take every night. That is an every night thing. If you are having trouble sleeping and you need magnesium, magnesium capsules from night Keto Chow. Night yeah. That, I mean, and it we have is, a discount code for it. It is so freaking so, amazing. Uh, discount for Keto Chow. Use the link. Never use the code 2 Crazy Ketos. It doesn't benefit the channel. Um, and that's the case with anybody. Um, yeah. Just go through the link down below. That'll always get you 10% off. And then you just go in there and it's on the it's the first line or second line of every one of our videos. And you'll get 10% off of everything except for a subscription. 
Oh, so Blue Dove is saying my tablets do fine in East Texas. So yeah. there you go. It Use just that depends on a... how you have it and how humid it is. Right. Uh, Mel said Hi, Mel. major non-scale vic victory. Tonight I had to chase my four-year-old run down the beach at least 20 meters. He was running off to explore. Again, I ran after him and I didn't get yes. winded. Yes. Okay, so here we go. This is important. This is super, super important. Like, I am so glad, Mel, that you shared that, but like, this is also a safety issue. It's not just a case of like, I want to be successful and like, a, for a vanity thing. I want to keep up with my four-year-old because they may be like trying to run out to the street and I want to be able to right. protect them in the moment, right? So being able to keep up with our family is very, very important. Oh, you've got this banner down here that has nothing on it. Just forward one. Oh. Boop. There we go. Now it's gone. All right. Thank okay. you for that. Can we move on? Sure. Okay. Next one is from Donna. Hey, Donna. Some days are going to be very challenging, but eating junk food doesn't solve problems. It yes. is only a temporary fix. When challenged, find some good habits that will help you, like taking deep breaths or go outside, write, call someone, take a nap, pray, walk, move, exercise, play with an animal or your kids and grandkids, read, do something, but don't eat your feelings. I absolutely love this. And my question is, when I have something stressing me, is my answer going to fix it? Is the answer that I am like putting to that problem, is it going to fix it or change circumstances in, in any way? Right. And so if I am just looking for distraction, okay, is, is it going to help me get my mind off of something stressful if I am just eating? Or is that just going to add more stress to me? The snacking, I feel like, is going to, on top of me feeling disgruntled in some way or needing a distraction, I need a stress reliever. If I answer that with a snack, now I still have the burden of stress and I have the burden of like the guilt of like, I don't want to do this thing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So that did not help it. That did not answer the problem. If I need a distraction and I decide to take a walk, instead of go get a snack. Will that help the situation? Yes, because it distracts me, but I'm also getting exercise, I'm getting fresh air, I'm getting some sunlight. That is a genuine helping response to that stressor. And there's lots of other things. If I stop for a minute, I need a distraction. Let me see, I go put a puzzle together. Is that going to give me a distraction that doesn't undermine me. Yes, because I'm gonna have a moment of creativity. I'm not thinking about what is stressing me. I'm putting things together. I am able to like piece something together. Maybe in my other situation, I feel stressed and I can't fix things. But here in this puzzle, in this moment, I have an opportunity to put some things together. So it's like finding the right actual answer to a question. Uh, I saw this message from Marie. He said, hey, Marie. will Keto Chug get the Daily Minerals back in tablet form? So they don't have them and they haven't had them yet in tablet form. Uh, that is something that I keep getting on them about. It's hard. Chris, it's a lot. Like, I really would like to have the Daily Minerals in tablet or in capsule form. It's a lot of minerals and I know to he put said in it's, a tablet. It's, he's like, it's about the size and, and getting the right concentration. Hopefully one day they will be able to do that. Uh, there is one more from Renee. Hey, Renee. Said, you just never know what the internet, Facebook, or 23andMe will bring across your path. Ultimately, thank you to the Two Crazy Ketos family, Joe and Rachel, for creating a platform to bring so many people together. I never imagined that I'd find family here. In this case, I'm thankful for all of the technology. Cheers and many more to these weirdos. Thanks for being my friends, my family, and cuz. You guys have taught me so much about cooking meat, life, friendship, family, brutal honesty, and most importantly, self-worth and acceptance. There isn't anything I wouldn't do for y'all. I, th thank you so much for sharing this, Renee. We love you so much. And you're, I mean, I like the fact that we're family. Like you, Renee actually found out through in the Two Crazy Ketos family group that she had a family member that, that she's actually physically related to the warden, to Shelly um, from, from Hungry Heath. And that was a really just cool thing that they discovered about themselves. But I'm thankful that you're my family too. Like even if we're not blood related, that we have had this opportunity to be able to meet new family, to become a family. And if you 
don't have friends and family members that understand you, that get you, we want you to know that we love you and that we want you as a part of our family. And we're so thankful for these last four years, now going on five years of Two Crazy Ketos, five years. that not only have people just absolutely transformed their life, they're getting healthy, they're enjoying their, their lives, their bodies, but that we've made friendships that have really helped us to enjoy our everyday life. Yeah. So that's just so precious. Thanks for sharing that, Renee. Let's do some chat here. Lori. Hey, Lori. I started Carnivore July 2022, started Beef Butter Bacon Egg January 1st, and I feel amazing. I start every morning watching your videos. Aww. Your love and encouragement keeps me going. Wow, Lori, Thank thanks much. for being here. Uh, Christine has a question. Hi, what are Christine. your opinions on natural and artificial flavors like in coffee? Good question. I have a saying. You can't be perfect. Right. Okay. Strive for perfection. No, you are never going to achieve it. Anybody who tells you they are eating perfect is either misinformed or... Got a little bit of problem with self-righteousness. <laughs> Um, I just don't see any need to be that way. I think you do the best you can. You're never going to be able to eat perfect. 90% is good enough. The problem with natural and artificial flavors. Now, some for some people, artificial flavors will affect their health yeah. in a negative way. Maybe they it has, have allergic reactions to yeah, things. Yeah, like if you have a strong sensitivity to nightshades, right? And then you have a you know some sort of a seasoning blend that has natural flavors in it. You may have to scrutinize that more than other people because right. of the nightshades that could possibly be in there. The problem with natural flavors is you don't know what's in it, and they don't have to tell you. And right. many times. Even the company that is putting it in there doesn't know what's in the natural flavor. Right. So, a couple of examples. For me, I don't worry about natural flavors. I just don't. I feel like that is a very tiny part of whatever I'm doing, considering that 95% of my diet is eating meat and vegetables. The fact that there are natural flavors in my Element, in my Redmond Relight, and in my Keto Chow, and maybe something else, even Keto Brick, which uses natural flavors, I'm okay with that because it's not a huge part of my diet. It's like someone saying, hey, I'm not going to have Wi-Fi in my house because I have to worry about like what it's doing to my brain. The problem is you can't avoid it. Yeah. Because even if you don't have Wi-Fi in your house, your it's does. coming from your neighbors. It's coming from the street. Down here, Comcast has public Wi-Fi all throughout like the neighborhood. So I don't worry about it as much. The only problem with natural flavors, like I said, is you don't know what's in there. And now you have to start thinking about like what could possibly be hiding in here. That's why I anytime something's got natural flavors, consider there's probably a carb in there. If it says zero carbs, Round it up to one. If you go to uh, one of those Coke Cola like 32 flavor machines, if you look at Diet Coke, it are, actually is a thing in there that says this product contains natural flavors, which may not be calorie free. Yeah. So there might be one calorie in that. I look at like I remember like Redmond Relight and Element use natural flavors inside of their natural flavors is maltodextrin. It's a tiny amount. I mean, it's like four carbs per thousand servings. It's not a lot. It is not going to affect you. But they don't have to tell you that it's there. They just can say natural flavors and hidden in there is maltodextrin. So, that, so that's where I start looking at with natural flavors. Where on the ingredient label is it? If it's the very first or second ingredient, I'm going to say no. But if it's at the bottom, I don't worry about and it. And if you're like me and you used to like basically have coffee flavored International House of Coffee or Cremora cups of drink, because that's what I did. I used to be like half of my coffee was like the creamers, the sugary creamer, and then the other half was actual coffee. If you've gotten rid of of that big thing, which is the sugary creamers and all the stuff that was sugary that we added to our coffee, if you are have moved that out of your coffee cup, 
let's celebrate that. That is a huge, huge, hairy deal. Like, super awesome. Yeah. Keto Simple, 100% seeing people succeed is some of the biggest motivation yes. because you see firsthand it's it possible. is possible. That's it. Because we get stuck in our brain that, like, we've tried so many different things and, and it's we failed over and over again. So we start to make the wrong conclusion that it must not ever be possible for us to be healthy. Yeah. Right? So when we see other people, it kind of puts a, uh, like a crack in that foundation of wrong thinking. And we get to see like, oh, wait a second. Hope has like sprung up through that crack, like a, like a plant that sprung up, uh, you know, in a sidewalk. That must not be totally true because I see right here there's somebody that's having good success. So it must be possible. Jennifer said, sitting in line at a burger joint grand opening, it's hard to see how metabolically challenged the other people in line look. I just want to hop out of my car and tell them how to order healthy. Yeah, it's, it is it is very challenging. But the best thing that you can do is be that person in the line that they can even just hear your order as you order it. And just believe that like the people that you are living life in front of, they are noticing. When you are ordering something, people are hearing it. You, you're planting seeds where people are like, okay, you know what? I could probably order a hamburger without the bun. Right. You know what I mean? You're, you're telling them, not in a preachy way, you're just living out your life in front of them and just trust the process that like other people will notice. Uh, Angie said, I eat this way to keep cancer markers low. Family doctors want me in a statin. That can cause cancer. Why is this a thing? Yeah. And Boink has got it. This is why. Because no doctor gets in trouble for prescribing a statin. It's that type of medical consensus. Yeah. They can get in trouble for Listen, not. I don't agree with certain things. And one thing I'm always going to say is you're in charge of your health journey. If you don't like what your doctor is telling you to do, either A, just don't do it. Or B, find another doctor. Yeah. You know, find another doctor you're allowed to find another doctor. Yeah, you are. I'm sure you can find another doctor somewhere in like your network if you're in some kind of a health network, even if it means driving. How much is your health worth it? Is your health worth maybe having to drive an extra hour to get to a doctor who has your uh, same way of thinking when it comes to what you eat? But you're in charge of your own health. But the one thing we have to remember with doctors is they are under a lot of scrutiny, not yeah, just from us, but from over from boards over them. And there is a certain way that they are supposed to do things. One of them is high cholesterol, give a statin. If they don't attempt to prescribe you a statin and then you die of a complication from high cholesterol. Guess who gets in trouble? They get sued. So a lot of it is CYA, cover your butt. Okay, and that is something we have to understand. That's why Dr. Barry has talked about, and we've talked about, you want to get a CGM, and your doctor says, I'm not writing you a prescription. Then you say to him, thank you. Can you please notate in your chart that I have metabolic syndrome, which we all do, and I was really want to monitor my glucose so that it doesn't turn into diabetes, and you refused it to me, and then give me a copy. Why do they? Why will they write you a prescription? Because you basically just told them, if I get metabolic syndrome, if I get diabetes, I will sue you because you have get, per, uh, stopped me from getting a tool that would have helped me prevent it. Yeah. That's what you're telling them. They're fearful of getting sued, and we have to remember that. I actually spoke with someone this week that uh, was like, I'm fed up with my doctor situation and found within their um, insurance that they could utilize teledoc services. So they were able to find a keto doctor that didn't live in their own state and they were able to have like, you know, Zoom that person and be able to have their uh, doctor's appointment that way. Once a year, they're planning to fly to where that doctor is so that they can be face to face and that the person can put hands on them. But for the nature of what they're utilizing, when that doctor says, okay, I need your, your blood lab work, 
they're not doing the blood lab work within the doctor's office anyway. They're giving you a prescription for the lab work and you're doing it in another office, whether it's like getting it done, you know, at a Quest facility or in the Walgreens clinic or whatever. So they're able to still get all the tests they need so that the doctor has all the information, but the doctor's appointment is over you know, Zoom. So right. there are a lot of options. We just maybe have to think outside the box a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Diane said, I started hey, beef butter bacon egg on 2-1 yesterday. I had a bad day of sweet craving and gave in. How do I get back on track today? What is the best plan of action? Get back in. That's it. Super, super easy. You, you know, if you're like, hey, um, I mean, it may be twofold. Number one, get back on track. Number two, Whatever it is that gave you, like, that was it was there for you to pick up, maybe you need to throw it out. Maybe you need to put it in a freezer and say, like, I can't, you know, I can't eat it until after I'm done with this challenge. Um, but you need to put it away. Put it away someplace or throw it away or give it away so that you don't have, because I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that the sweet craving that you're talking about was, a, like, you answered it with a keto sweet thing. Um, if you answered it with something that was, actually sugary, then that needs to go. You need to throw that out. But if it's something that is keto friendly, um, that you want to eat and consume after you've finished with this challenge, I would put it out of your eye line of sight, something that's going to take a lot of uh, steps for you to get to. I have actually put things in a tub before on the bottom of like our... Uh, like winter wear. So it was like, if I want that thing, I've got to go unload the entire closet, find it down in, t in the totes and like get it out. And by that time, I've talked myself out of it. Yeah. Right? Too much effort. Jerry said, your weight does not encapsulate who you are. I am not fat. I have fat. It's a matter yes, of perspective. Yes, it is. And that perspective matters. That mindset, it matters so much. Uh, Joy said, hey, found that Swiss cheese and mozzarella cheese don't give me the bloat and phlegm that Colby Jack does. Yeah, a lot That's of different cheeses, the, the way they're made, they're, they affect you differently. Hard cheeses are generally better for you than softer cheeses. Like a Parmesan? And just figuring those kind of things out. Uh, she also said, I've been eating the proper human diet since September and trying to get even cleaner the more I get into it. Finding what I can and I cannot eat. I've only lost 10 pounds. I know I've lost inches, but still. It is frustrating, but here's the thing. You, you've you lost 10 pounds and gained so much perspective. When you stop and you're like, okay, in doing this, I was able to find out even with it, like that all cheese are not the same for me. So like, I'm going to, guess what? I'm going to leverage the cheeses that don't cause a bunch of phlegm because it's not just about my shirt size, but it's how I feel in my body. And, and I'm going to go out and enjoy my day. So I want to feel confident in what I'm wearing. But when I go out that door, I don't want to be snotting and sneezing and hacking and coughing the entire day because I'm super phlegmy from a cheese that inflames me. So just gaining that knowledge is awesome. Matreya said, I eat keto products. It's what makes it sustainable for Same me. Same here. And again, that's that's the whole point is it has to be sustainable. It does. Lady Fritzer said, did the two crazy ketos have microphones to talk to each other when they are scuba underwater? Oh. No, we use hand signals. But here's one of the things that I love about being Some underwater. Some of them aren't friendly. Nobody can bother me. Not even Rachel. Uh, right? What's, You're on I your mean, own? I think that one of the greatest things that Rachel ever heard was when she went diving for her open water with you and what was it he said to you are you ready for an he hour he said are you ready for 25 minutes where no one can reach you where you are truly off the grid and it's just going to be what you behold and what you're thinking you are about to be alone with your thoughts for 25 minutes and i thought wow I had never thought of it that way. I had only thought like, I'm going to need to use like, you know, YouTube meditation yoga time or something for me to get into that kind of a space. But it's, it's true. When I am just looking at all of the fish around me, or we're looking at turtles and stuff like that, that's all that I have m mind real estate for mm -hmm. is just to notice the beauty and all of the 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 negative things about myself even are just gone. 
and it's just quiet, and I really enjoy that. Yeah, so, but underwater, now we don't have the masks that you can talk. That's another whole type, and you can't use them when you get down depths because more pressure on your face. Um, but no, we use hand signals. Like, and so you, I think even in yesterday's video, you'll see like, as the person who was kind of leading everybody with more experience when we were with Chris and Miriam, like, I'm always going to you, like, are you okay? You know, this means something's wrong. Like, well, it's funny because I usually want, like, are you good? I want to do this. No, this don't do that. This means go we're going up. up. means right. we're going up. So, like, I'm really. It took you a while when I go, I, are you okay? You'd I be never like, no. say that. <laughs> I never go, like, I'm a-okay. But, like, I it, for him to be like, is everything okay? Or like, is it okay? Or do you have like an ear problem or something? I have to fight the urge to do like, yeah, I'm doing good. Yep. Thumbs up. A couple more before we get off. Uh, Tony said, I feel deprived. I've been doing this for 14 months. I haven't been doing many vegetables lately. Maybe that's what I'm missing. I do, I do miss fat bombs, jalapeno poppers, and salads. Tony, give it a shot. You're not saying I feel deprived and I'm gonna go eat an entire like chocolate cake that's got full sugar in it. Have what a little bit. What you're saying that you miss is a vegetable or a salad. Go eat that and then say out loud, write it down, I got what I was missing. I am not deprived. Because if that is the only script and we're just playing, you know, playing it on repeat like I have to be keto today, like woe is me, then it's not a good headspace. It's not, it may start out with like a determination, but then it becomes like wearing on your mind. Go have a vegetable and say to yourself, I answered that vegetable. Like I, I got it because it wasn't like I was craving a vegetable. You're not saying like I'm craving it. You're saying that like I feel deprived because I'm not giving that to myself. So go ahead and like have the most keto friendly vegetable that you can find and be able to answer that like i am not deprived yeah. i can eat these vegetables when you know if i choose to okay there's two more that i wanted to touch on before we get off jj i had hey, a JJ. similar epiphany last week i was about to order a 2xl shirt paying two dollars extra and i decided no i'm not paying extra for clothes anymore i refuse to buy another 2xl shirt I'm close to an extra. That life. is good. That is really good. You may even want to shop at stores where like you, I find stores that are more generous even in their sizing because I'm trying to move over my mindset. So like, for instance, I really like Old Navy. I feel like Old Navy has like a generous, like variation on not just sizes, but also cuts and styles because different I can't wear just because it's like a size whatever in pants they are gonna lay different on me different shirts cut different ways lay different so um this past Saturday I actually I was telling everybody on the supporter live stream on Saturday that I went with my mom to Old Navy and took like the time it took us about two hours yo but I took every single style of jean, whether it was like high-waisted, mid-rise, low-waisted, the bell-bottom, the OG, to find out what cut actually works best with my body and then move forward purchasing that because I need to try it on and see what actually works. So trying on different like cuts of shirts and styles of pants may be a good investment of your time and energy. It was for me. Okay, uh, Kathy said, hey, Kathy. if you lose a lot of weight, inevitably you're going to have some loose skin. Is there anything we can do while losing weight to counter the loose skin? Yes and no. Okay, so are you going to have loose skin? Depends on how long have you been obese and how much weight you lose. I'm gonna... Can you do anything about it? Some people say autophagy and extended fasting may help a little bit, but ultimately... The only way you're going to get rid of a lot of loose skin is with surgery. For me, I'm not interested in surgery and a scar all the way around my stomach. So one of the things that I do, I do will wear compression garments, especially as you're losing weight. I find that that really helps. If you're wearing, you know, yoga pants, you're wearing like compression undergarment gear, you're wearing like the long sleeve stuff even that, that pulls it in. But the fact of the matter is... 
I have loose skin. Now, people have emailed me personally to say it is unattractive and that they think that I should get skin surgery in order to deal with it. I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate like that you think that it will help me if I get skin surgery. I'm not comfortable doing that and I'm not going to do that. Now, sometimes if I feel like I want to look better in a certain outfit, I will wear a, a long sleeve over it or I'm looking for cuts. Maybe I don't always wear a tank top. Maybe I'll wear a three quarter or something that covers that up because it is about me feeling confident in my clothes. But you have to make that decision, you know, up to you. Yeah, we're not what against you want to do. We're not skin against surgery. It. We just are not interested in for us. For us. But I will say this and then I we have one more and I know we're late, but I, I, this other one is really good. Um, Keto is probably one of the things, one of the eating lifestyles that helps prevent the loose skin as you lose weight the most, in my experience. Yeah. Because Rachel lost weight before and the loose it, skin was it horrible. It was really bad. But because of the way you're losing the weight, I think it helps a little bit. Also, losing weight slower is better. Yes. So, yeah, right. If you, you'll see this when people have had gastric bypass surgery and they drop a lot and they have a lot of loose skin, it's because you're not giving your skin that time to regain. But when you lose it slowly, sometimes it can come down a little bit more. And I've experienced that, but yeah, we have loose skin. I'm okay with it. I just, you know, I wear a compression shirt if I'm worried about the skin coming up over the top of my pants or something. Well, and I mean, do I look optimum like naked? To uh, me, no. you do. But Joe's the only one that's seeing it. If everybody else is seeing my naked body, then like we, I need to rethink my life choices, right? Okay. Like that's just a thing. Last one, Joe and Rachel. I fell off the wagon with house renovations and life in general. I'm angry at myself and still this morning. Do you guys ever have problems from time to time trying to get back on? Um, we've never gone off of keto. I don't struggle, and neither does Rachel struggle with going off of keto uh, and and that kind of stuff. But we do struggle with occasionally like, hey, I'm in the mood for more treats. And for us, it's just a matter of trying to put it back into perspective. Now, this is funny. I wrote this this morning thinking like this may be a response to somebody's question. And I believe, Marie, it's a response to your question. Guilt is a useless waste of energy. It resolves nothing. It weakens us. And in our weakened state, we are more likely to make the mistake over again. So the very first thing that you can do is let go of the guilt of that. It's not going to do anything. It's not going to change anything. And if you get in your mindset like, I'm a failure, I fail, like I should be really hard on myself, you know, I'm a dirty person that makes dirty, terrible decisions then it becomes easier to make decisions you don't want to make, right. right? So if you're like, I'm a failure, then in a moment where you're like, I'm very stressed in an area, it makes sense to fail, yeah. right? Because that's what a failure does. That's right. So start to, to let go of that guilt, change your way of thinking about yourself. You're not a failure. You're, you have nothing to be disappointed in. You're a human person and you breathing in and out today means that there, you have a success in life, right. right? You're breathing today is a new day. Go make choices, not because you're striving from victory, but because you are in a place of victory. You know what you're supposed to eat and you can make that choice. We are going to end right there. Now, don't forget, on Thursday, we will be back with our regular Thursday live stream at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Have a good day, guys. We love you.